<laughs> Hi, welcome to our Stanford Live. We are here with uh, Labrina Guyton, who is our senior talent consultant that oversees all of radiology, as well as Natalie, who is the director of radiology. And we're just going to talk with you guys a little bit today more about the department, current openings, as well as future plans. <laughs> Thanks, the Carly. All yours. <laughs> thank you, Carly, and thank you all for joining us um, to learn a little bit more about our awesome radiology department. I will be introducing Natalie Del Imagine, who's actually the manager of radiology and who I've had the pleasure of working with for the past two and a half years. Natalie has been with Stanford for 14 years total, started out as a technician, and then she moved into the supervisor role where she was there for three years, and she's currently the manager where she's been for two and a half years. So I'm going to pass the baton over to my awesome colleague, Natalie. Natalie, take it away. Thank you, ladies. Um, yeah, so Stanford is um, hiring right now. We do have some full-time positions uh, as well as relief positions, although many of you might um, know those as per diem roles. Uh, we are a level one trauma center, very high volume. Uh, so it's, um, it's a high impact place, but you learn a lot. And honestly, um, after working here for even a year, you really could work anywhere else. Um, Labrina can speak to this more than I can, but we do have an awesome benefits package. Um, we do uh, have competitive hourly rates. And um, overall, just a really wonderful department, some really great people. Uh, we have been short staffed for a little bit of time. Um, so they are really looking forward to getting some new folks in, whether that be new graduates, because we are a teaching hospital. So we love um, coaching and, and training new grads. Um, but we also love to get folks that are already, you know, have been in uh, the industry for a couple of years. Uh, so it is nice to bring that talent in. Um, all the leadership in x-rays still take x-rays, including me. So we are very in tune with frontline challenges um, and also the things that need to be celebrated. And I think that we're probably one of the very few departments that you know do still have managers and supervisors taking x-rays. Uh, and I think it's a real uh, morale boost, um, as well as just keeping us in touch with what you're looking at and dealing with frontline. Um, so yes, and I have been here for a very long time. I will retire here. And we have a lot of folks in the department um, that are doing the same thing. We have uh, some people that have been here for 30 years, 25 years. It's just really a great place to work. So um, hopefully we get some some more people in. And that's really my spiel. Well, thanks, Sally. Um, just for those, you know, you, you touched a little bit on it, but can you talk a little bit more about the culture of your department and what to expect kind of day to day and anything fun you guys do as a team that kind of just builds that unity and family right now? Sure. Um, it is challenging with COVID. We um, we used to do a lot of potlucks and things like that. Um, we still do a little bit of that as long as we can package things individually. Um, a lot of the staff does do, um, you know, events outside of work where they gather amongst themselves and they've, um, they've gone kayaking, they take trips together, they go to the local pub and have some beer. Uh, so really everybody's here to support one another and they have made some very long lasting friendships. Um, uh, in terms of working, you know, the schedules are variable and we would require every other weekend. Um, you know, uh, if you're day shift for a week, those day shift blocks might fluctuate a little bit where you might be in the OR one morning and then maybe GI the next day. Um, so there, there isn't um, big consistency with the schedule right now. Um, however, it's good for you because you um, keep your skills up in all the different areas. So um, yeah, just a lot of long lasting friendships have been made here. And, you know, we will try to do more potluck type things once, you know, COVID subsides a bit and we can share food again. So yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> um, and on our chat box, we're starting to get questions about what are your current openings that you have and what type of experience are you looking for specifically for those openings? 
Well, if since we're looking for new grads included, um, really just it can be that you just graduated and passed your ARRT last week. We are um, having people apply before they even have their CRT because that does take about three weeks. Um, the actual positions that we have open currently are three full-time positions, which are variable shifted and include every other weekend. Um, and then the relief positions, we have two of those. And what's required is either working eight weekday shifts a month for us, four weekend shifts a month. And so usually that's every other weekend folks will do, um, or some kind of combination thereof. Our um, relief positions don't work like other per diems where you're kind of on call. We actually set the schedule. So if it's something where you want to come in and say, I'm available every Tuesday and Thursday, just schedule me. We do things like that. Uh, but we do need our relief uh, folks to come in and pick up shifts. We, we do need the coverage. So it's not a place where you could do that and work one or two shifts a month. We need more. Um, and so, yeah, next question, if there's one I can help answer, Carly. No, absolutely. So those, the positions you're talking about were specifically for radiology tech, correct? Yes, this is for um, radiologic technology. This, we do not cross train. Um, we are looking into cross training possibly with MAMO in the future, but currently you either work in x-ray or you work in CT, although CT does pull from our, um, our folks. So if you're doing well and you know your attendance is good, great behavior, work ethic, teamwork, um, you know, all the boxes are checked. We definitely love to see you promote out into other modalities because we want to keep you part of the Stanford family, but we also um, have opportunities for growth, which is really great in a company. Awesome. Um, Labrina, the next question I think is more for you. What is the application process for these openings and how does that kind of work? Yeah, absolutely. So once they apply online, we try to screen the resumes within the first 48 hours. Natalie is really on top of who's applying, when they're applying, and she doesn't let them sit in the queue for very long. Once the resumes are screened, um, Natalie will contact them to either do a phone interview or a face-to-face -face interview, but I can promise you it's not a long process. If she sees somebody and she likes them, she's moving quickly. So first step would be to apply online. We'll review your resume, make sure that you have all the minimum qualifications. That resume me is forwarded over to Natalie and then she'll be in touch with you very shortly to schedule either a phone interview or an actual interview. Quick process. She moves quickly. Okay. That's great to hear. Um, and then another question that's come up now a couple of times, do we hire all of our uh, openings internally, Natalie, or do we ever go out to a staffing agency? We've never had to the staff any agency. Okay. So for any yeah. positions that they're interested in, it would absolutely be through us. Oh, so yes. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yes, it comes through us. Perfect. Um, another question that just came in. Do you have to have U.S. radiology experience? What if you have experience from a U.K. hospital? As long as you have U.S. Um, licensing, then that's fine. Okay, wonderful. Um, and then what is the training for the new hires? Kind of what, what is it like your first few weeks working in the radiology department? That's a really good question. Um, so yes, for the first few weeks, we like to have you Monday through Friday, uh, eight hour shifts. And so we do have different areas. We have two um, hospitals actually side by side, an older hospital. And then we opened up the new location, which is right next door um, in 2019. So we will train you at both hospitals. They, um, one of them has an adult emergency department, department and trauma. And the other one has a pediatric emergency department and trauma. So you'll be trained fully with both of those. Um, all the various equipment, we do have uh, varying equipment throughout the different locations. So you'll be trained with all of that. And especially if you're a new grad, we do a more extensive training because um, you haven't been out on your own yet. Um, so we also train on protocols. You'll do GI uh, training along with OR training. So we typically do about three weeks of main x-ray training, and then you'll do an additional three weeks of training up in the OR um, because we have very specialized procedures and um, the doctors are particular about making sure that we all really know what we're doing up there. So we do give extra training time. Um, we do utilize C-arms as well as O-arms, and we 
actually also use what's called a less ray, which a lot of folks aren't uh, familiar with, and it does take some additional time to get trained on those on those uh, pieces of equipment. Awesome, thanks, Sally. And then another question that came in kind of similar. Um, someone was asking, you know, when you're in these positions, is there mentorship available? I'm assuming for, you know, learning about the different areas of growth within the department. Oh, sure. And the thing is, um, it's actually really challenging um, to get the uh, current staff to let the new hires just run free because they really want to help. And so you will always have someone to call on um, and to uh, help you with how to access things off of our main website, you know, how to update licenses, how to find HR information, um, where the schedule is, all the different questions that employees often have. Um, plus, because leadership is, um, you know, we're not micromanaging type leadership. However, we are very present and um, here for you whenever you need us. And so we help you with whatever you need. Um, so you will not be alone. Even once the training is done, if you find a difficult uh, exam come up, you can grab another tech and, and get help, have a second look. Um, we're all here to make sure that you're successful you know, um, with your time with us. So, yeah. Hey, Carly. Yes. Can I just think, uh, speak a little bit more about the mentorship? Because a lot of my CT tech positions that I am filling, they filter through from the radiology department. So um, one thing I can attest to is the excellent training that they receive. I mean, I'm always asking, like, who's going to be left on Allie's team? Because we're always taking her people to fill some of our other roles in the CT department. So she trains well. She doesn't hold people back if they want to get promoted into different roles. But a lot of the positions that we are filling for CT have come from her department. So excellent mentorship and excellent training and a lot of opportunity for growth. I guess when someone comes in as like a tech, Natalie, where do they kind of what's the, the growth development from there? Where do you see like the path for them go? Do they kind of stay within that same role? Do they gravitate to other roles? Uh, it really depends on the person. So generally speaking, uh, during the interview process, I can really pinpoint who I think would probably do well in leadership. Um, we do ask, you know, uh, the typical question, where do you see yourself in five years? And we take note of that. So if there are folks that say, hey, I'm really interested in CT and that's something I want to do, um, you know, we think that that's great. Um, and so we make sure, we, we try to keep everybody here for a year in general uh, radiography, get them really uh, well versed in this modality, especially because if they move on to another hospital where there is cross training, you have to make sure that your x-ray skills are on point. Um, because you know, at Stanford, once you go to CT, that's all you're doing. So we want to make sure to get those skills set in before moving them to CT. But again, um, we, you know, we, we do support staff moving up and out of, of general radiography. It, it's, it's kind of the natural flow of things. Although we do have a lot of people that just love it in x-ray. Um, and so when I have someone that's just um, really strong in their leadership skills, then I start looking into, um, talking with them about going into a lead role, perhaps, um, where they can move up into like a supervisory role and, um, you know, ultimately just work their way up. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. Uh, so I don't know when the manager position is going to open up, um, but it's probably going to be a little bit. So, but we do see people do leadership in other areas um, as they, as they come up. So there's just a lot of room to grow. I know that, you know, room to grow is kind of a huge theme right now. Um, now, I've seen a couple other questions pop up outside of the radi radiology text. Do you have other opportunities within your department? Um, so the um, so these are the opportunities we have um, moving. Yes. Into a lead role, supervisor role and whatnot. Um, also, everybody starts out as every other weekend. And it is not because we want to punish anybody just coming in. It's that, you know, we are 24 seven, you know, 365 days a year, we need coverage during every time frame. Um, and weekend coverage is very important because we do work off of a bit of a skeleton crew. Um, and so we do find the need to dedicate shifts in the night shift, OR shifts, 
Um, and then we have some evening, you know, Monday through Fridays that we're looking at to really uh, make sure that people have all the skills they need for those shift times. So there is the ability to, um, you know, at a level one trauma center to have a Monday through Friday schedule, essentially, um, while picking up one or two weekends just to support, not a full weekend, but a weekend day. Um, so that's pretty much it. And then if you want to move on even more, then you would, you know, go to MRI, you would go to CT, MAMA or some, or even cath lab and IR. That's a big one for people uh, to promote out to. Okay. Awesome. And you've been mentioning day shift, evening shift, night shift. What are the exact shifts that are available? Um, like what are the hours specifically for like day shift, night shift, evening shift? Uh, day shift includes um, anywhere from, um what five in the morning until 11 in the morning start times evening shift is from 1 p.m to 3 p.m start for the shift um night shift is you know 11 30 at night through the morning um, we also have a 4 a.m but that's still considered part of the night shift um so so there is a 16 percent uh 16 percent differential for the night shift which is big um, makes a big difference in your paycheck. And then evening shift differential, we have a 10% uh, differential there. Um, and so, yeah, those are all the different start times. And then in GI and OR, same thing. Um, you know, we have different morning shift start times and then some evening shift start times. Um, and another question that was asked is, um, are holidays required? Are they rotating? What's the holiday scheduling look like? These are such good questions. I, I hope these people apply because you guys are using your um, critical thinking skills and really thinking about yourselves and um, and and working here. So I love this. Um, holidays. We require one major, two minor holidays every year, and um, we give out a lot of PTO. We're not a company that says you get two weeks of PTO. Um, you will accrue a lot of PTO here, actually. And um, and so we offer in November before the coming year. So we did this November of 2021. Um, so everybody picks their holidays at that time, one major, two minor. And then they also um, give us four weeks of PTO. So you're, you're promised that those four weeks, if you have a wedding that's coming up or something you can plan ahead for, um, if you don't know what you want to do, you can just throw out some dates, but you don't have to. And then throughout the year, you're able to um, ask for PTO all the time. Um, and so so that's that's what's really great about this company. You will have um, plenty of time off. Well, awesome. Um, and we just had a comment come in for you, Natalie. It wasn't a question, but Cedric over at Lucille said, you look like you're having too much fun to think of leaving Stanford. I'm not okay. So I just said that, but no, 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 no. They're going to either have to drag me out or I'm retiring because uh, I love this organization. It's so fun to work here. I know so many people. Uh, I started my career here and I just, there's a loyalty that goes with that. And, and to be honest, I didn't mean to become manager. It kind of happened. Um, and so that's probably why I still take x-rays because I identify as an x-ray tech. Uh, even though I'm in leadership. But the great thing about being here um, is that I can help my techs make sure that they have everything that they need and achieve their goals in a way that I wanted, you know, would want my leadership to be and, and were when I was a technologist. So I'm able to run this department um, in a way that works really well for the techs because I'm still a tech. I love that. So kind of piggybacking off of that, why should someone pick Stanford over, say, another hospital in the Bay Area? Um, we listen, I know I'm biased and there's a lot of really great organizations. So I don't want to say that other organizations aren't great. And to be very honest with you, Stanford is not for everybody. Um, if you enjoy level one trauma, you know, seeing some things that are um, interesting, um, you know, you really have to be sure that you want to work here because you are going to work hard, but you're going to go home at the end of the day and feel really good about what you did. Um, you know, there's so much research going on here. I took an x-ray of somebody 
on a Saturday um, and their chest X-ray looked one way. And then the next day on Sunday, I took another chest X-ray and it looked like a totally different person. And I was frantic. I thought I took the X-ray on a, the wrong patient. And so I checked with the nurse and double checked everything. And it turns out they had a double lung and heart transplant. And so they did have an entirely different chest. Um, so you don't see that kind of stuff everywhere. I think UCSF is very comparable to us. Um, I don't think we're better or worse than any other establishment. I think that um, we are what we are. And um, I try to be upfront with, um, you know, what's going to be expected of folks. We don't send in images that are clipped or rotated. Um, we repeat things until they're right. Um, of course, maintaining a Lara through all of that. But um, our radiologists are very specific. So you're going to learn to take really great x-rays here because um, that's the expectation. You know, Stanford is great and, and we uh, take care of our patients in a way that I think might surpass other places, um, but maybe not. So I don't think we're better, but um, it's a really great place to work. And so hopefully we get some of you folks in. Holly, can I comment on that? Yeah, absolutely, Maria. Natalie cares about her people. She's being modest, but I know that she works hard and she plays hard. I know some of the activities that they have, which I won't, I won't mention online, um, but I know her team has a lot of fun. She has some chefs in her group, so she talked about the potluck. When um, one of her teammates got hired, they had a potluck, and he baked me the most amazing banana bread that I've ever tasted in my entire life. So they have a lot of fun um, on their team. Um, and, and they just care about people. It's not all about the work. It's about the people, how you're feeling, how your well-being is, especially during this time with COVID. It's been hard for everyone, but everybody is making sure to check in, make sure that you're doing okay. So um, she's one of those managers. Yes, she works hard. She's a straight shooter. She'll hold you accountable, but she also has your back and she truly believes in having fun. So that's why I say Stanford. Thank you, Labrina. <laughs> <laughs> um, Labrina, can you think of anything else that you would want to add kind of to everything that we've talked about of reasons to pick Stanford or the different benefits that we have available um, when you become a full-time full employee? Full-time benefits are great. I mean, the, the normal medical dental division, but I think our 403B um, kind of sets us apart because of the matching that you get, um, well, the free money, 5% after one year and then matching of up to Four percent, which could potentially be nine percent of free money for your 403b. So, in addition to all the other great benefits, I think our 403b really sets us apart. Um, as far as the overall, you know, why Stanford? Again, it's just the culture is great. It's a great place to work. The people are great. They truly care about your well-being. Um, the process is not a long process. So, if anybody's interested in applying for their jobs or want to know how you can find our careers, just go to careers at stanfordhealthcare.org. You can reach out to me, connect with me on LinkedIn or on Facebook, and I'm happy to help you through the application process. I saw some comments on the chat about the application process. So feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or on Facebook and I'll be happy to help you through the process. But overall, it's a great place to work. Yes, we work very hard, but we play hard as well. Oh, awesome. Um, another question that popped up, Natalie, what is the interview process like? Is it experience-based questions, behavioral-based questions? Um, just a little overview on what they can expect once they get to that part. It's, it's both. Um, you know, we want to know how you deal with confrontation because, you know, um, there can be situations in a trauma, let's say, where you've got an ortho physician and the attending trauma physician, and they're not agreeing with where we should start with our x-rays. Um, and so it can be an uncomfortable situation to have two doctors telling you to do two different things and they're both attendings. Um, and so you have to know how to handle yourself. So we wanna make sure that you're comfortable in, in um, situations that might be uncomfortable. Um, the OR can be kind of the same thing. Most x-ray techs know what I'm talking about. You know, uh, the doctors can sometimes be very demanding and you just, you we just wanna know that you can stay calm under pressure and still, you know, do your job in a really good way. Um, 
And then, yeah, we, we do ask questions about positioning or just taking x-rays in general. We want to make sure um, that you, you know, because we can't test your x-ray ability and because a lot of you are going to be new grads coming in, but we want to make sure that you um, can critically think. So even if you answer me incorrectly, just because you don't know this piece, um, the reason why you answer it, if I can just see the wheels turning and, and it makes sense where how you came to that conclusion, um, I think that's amazing. So we just want to know that you can critically think, um, you know, that you are dependable and that you can work under pressure. So those types of questions for sure. And then I just gauge personality, um, you know, just, you know, how I guess, um, it's hard to explain, but body language, you know, the tone of your voice, um, if you are wrong with something and, and, and I correct it, um, you know, how you do with, with that uh, constructive criticism, because there's going to be some of that coming in. Um, so we just want to make sure also that you're a good fit with our current culture, which is a lot of people working hard, um, supporting one another. So I want to make sure that I bring in people who, who match that and, and who are positive. Yeah. Ooh, awesome. Um, and another question came in and it, it kind of relates to what you talked about a little bit earlier, but they want a little bit more detail about, can you share how you support your employees growth and development in your department? Um, sure. And some of it is actually forced, um, joking mostly, but, um, I recognized someone who right now um, is actually a lead. Uh, he didn't want to be a lead, but he's our biggest cheerleader. He has so much knowledge. He already was, um, you know, doing all the things that leads do. And so it took me about two or three months to convince him that he was already a lead and he might as well be compensated for that and actually be in the role. Um, so I don't know if that's necessarily supporting more than just seeing what he was capable of. And, and now that he's in the role, he's thankful and doing really well and he loves it. Um, the other thing is, you know, um, if people need time off, I do have a, a couple of folks who took a three month leave of absence to go to Texas and do the MRI program. Obviously it puts us out a little bit to, to accommodate that because they're missing off the schedule, but we do think it's important for people to be supported while they do get more of an education and you, you can't work and educate from Texas. Um, and, or, and there's someone actually, um, we are making sure that, you know, we give her specific time off because she's doing the MR program down south. Um, so we do accommodate that. And I know ultimately when they get back from these leaves or, you know, after they're done with these programs, they are going to leave us and go to MRI. Um, and and in knowing that, we, we do support it still because we just want people to do well. Um, we supported folks through COVID. You know, they had family uh, issues, things were going on, um, older folks in the family. So, so yeah, you know, we gave people time off to take care of their families. Um, we have, as Labrina was saying, great benefits for when you are starting a family yourself. Um, we support uh, the Stanford babies. I love fur babies, so I support the fur baby people. Um, yeah. So basically anything that you want to do, as long as we have enough staffing to accommodate you, we will, you know, support you through all your, your new adventures. And Carly, just to add to that, I would say if you were to get hired at Stanford and you know that you have aspirations to do something, be vocal about it. I mean, you know, when you're, you know, during your interview session or when you're having your touch base or your one-on-one -on -one with your leadership team, talk about what your career path what you want it to look like and be vocal about it so that you can start to develop that career path with your manager. There's not always going to be opportunities for leadership or for a management position, but at least if you're on the same page as far as what you're looking for, then your managers to support you in your development and growth. No, awesome. Thank you for that, Labrina. Um, well, Natalie, it looks like we had a lot of great questions today um, and a lot of interest that Labrina can probably circle back with throughout the comments. Um, I did include our careers website in the chat box. So go there. You can type in radiology tech. It'll pop up. 
um, and apply and you will get the pleasure of speaking with these two ladies. Um, Labrina, Natalie, did you have anything else you wanted to add before we signed off? I don't think so. I'm just, I'm hopeful that we do get some candidates through this process and I look forward to speaking to you folks in the future. You know, and thank you all for spending your lunchtime, your afternoon with us. I'm super excited to see all the comments and all the people that participated. So thank you very much. All right, guys. Well, we will see you guys on the next Stanford Live. Thanks for joining us today. Bye. Bye-bye.